The BizDoc is back from Hawaii, and I've traded my ties in for coffee. As a matter of fact, this is my favorite Yeti mug, and a couple years ago, I did a great case study on Yeti. Go check it out. But this week, it's something you wanted to know about, a company that went from startup to IPO. So I picked one out that I think is great. To you, an educational software company. Where did they come from? Where are they going? Why are they dominating? And what was the journey like along the way this week? To you, an educational technology company that started as a startup. Patrick and I go to Salt Lake City and meet Chip Posick at the Education Technology Conference put together by GSV, Global Silicon Valley. Great guy, talked about it, and we got to see the presentation he made. What was equally cool is he kept interspersing Van Halen and reference to music, showing he was a very cool CEO with a great vision and a great eye for what was happening in the market. So let's step back for the history of Chip and 2U and look first at the venture capital investment and how he raised that. So we start in 2009, 2.8 million in seed money. Then shortly thereafter, a 10 million Series A, followed by a 20 million Series B, then a 32 million Series C, a 26 million Series D, followed by a Series D. So that's probably about a 30, 31 million Series D. So the grand total between 2009 and 2013 was $96 million in venture capital. That's not a lot when you think about now what some of the software companies are raising or you look at the billions of dollars that, that Uber raised and things like that. And he, he had a vision in education technology. And what he was working on is graduate programs. Well, during this first phase of the company, he would manage to start 24 graduate programs. So his software being used by major colleges, you and I would recognize to offer online education. This was a this augmented the on-campus experience for students and also opened up additional revenue streams, not only for 2U, but for the universities themselves. So they had a pretty good run here, 24 graduate programs, really you know, sharp early player in education technology with a focus not on just technology, and there are those companies, or how to be a coder, and there are those companies, but this was for online higher education. So the yellow line right here is where the IPO happens in 2014. It went at about $14, $15 a share, had a pop to about 20, and they went on this real run of hype over three years. And, you know, their revenue was very nice. In 2016, they were $206 million. In 2017, $287 million. Meanwhile, over this just first four years of being public, they keep running. There's a lot of hype around the company, a lot of hype around online education, a lot of hype around additional venture investment. And they go all the way up to $100 a share. There is only one word for this part of the graph, and that is, damn! That is a high, high shot that you took to $100 a share. Well, then things settle in and some of the hype goes away and suddenly we're sliding down. They're trying to measure with metrics. They talk to Wall Street about how they're measuring incoming students, how they're talking about what constitute a whole enrollment, and Wall Street got a little nervous with it. In the middle of this, they augmented the products they had by acquiring Get Smarter for $103 million. Now, what Get Smarter allowed them to do was offer now short courses to augment the platform they built for higher education. They offered here another 41 grad programs. So you see the company is accelerating in its ability to build and offer programs. However, from Wall Street's perspective, there are some questions in the financials, even though they were on a run with revenue. So let's take this dip as it is, but let's go look at the run of revenue they had. From 216 to 287 and 17 to 412, 18, 574 million and 19, 774 million 2020. And in the fourth quarter of 2020, they were 210, 220 in revenue, as I recall, which means that they're already on a, a trailing 12 month run for eight. 140, 860 million dollars. And I think the guidance they've got right here is like the 930, 950 range, something like that for 2021. But nonetheless, what does this revenue say? 
it's a real company growing its revenues. Now, maybe the EBIT is not there. Maybe Wall Street analysts are not satisfied with the strategy they're seeing. However, they are driving the revenue. Now, they did buy some more revenue here in 2019. They bought Trilogy for $750 million. By the way, Get Smarter, that was a $103 million cash purchase, which didn't dilute the stock at all. So it's also easy to see that that lended um, some to the, to the hype and pump in this early phase here. So they go and buy Trilogy and they start offering boot camp. So now you've got short courses, graduate programs, boot camp, all being offered by 2U, which is an education technology company and one of the few that was out there. As a matter of fact, in a recent interview, Chip said that can't believe it's been seven years being public and it's been kind of lonely out there as one of the only public companies because it's good to have competitors public because it offers you a comp. You have to outperform them and your numbers have to be better, your KPIs have to be better, your overall growth has to be better, but you've got someone to compare to so that the analysts that follow you and give you your buy sell ratings or hold neutral ratings or accumulate ratings, all of those that come together, and once you're over about $500 million in enterprise value and market cap, those analysts will cover you and it's important to have a competitor to compare yourself to, and you gotta beat them. That's the way the game is played. So you, here you've got the company is pushing hard here going forward with its initiatives. Now I wanna talk about this right here. So you have the dip down and they dropped into the teens here, which is where their IPO was. So it is no fun to go out at 14 to $17 and to suddenly be right back at $17 you know, this many years later, even after you've acquired two companies and you've added a lot of texture and diversity to your educational offerings. I got short courses, I've got uh, corporate trainings I can offer, I've got higher education, I keep adding graduate programs and adding more schools that you and I know about, famous school names, tier one universities in the United States. I've got all that, yet this comes here. Well, if you read the, the stories on this, there's a lesson here. I don't think the company did as good of a job as it could have of helping Wall Street understand what was going on and how it would be measuring itself. Because you had a variety of analysts who are out there, one of whom say, I don't think it's investable at this point. Really, you don't think it's investable? Somebody, it's, somebody is buying the, the course. Somebody is buying the software. Somebody is here as a customer and it's continuing to grow revenues. And yet you have an analyst saying, I don't know if it's investable. And that was a little shocking to me. Although they were posting losses and they were posting, you know, and sharing information about just how much money it took to create each course. But all of those metrics, and I could have drawn them here on the chart, were going in the right direction. In other words, the losses were being reduced. They were getting scalability and what it cost to build a new course or bring another university online. And all that was there. Okay. Now let's go talk about the future. And I think the future is bright and I think COVID is gonna end up being a positive catalyst for 2U. Let me tell you why. Right now, 2020, 2021, and here we are, first quarter 2021, just about the end of the first quarter when we filmed this, you have, they've already done a 220, 210 quarter that I mentioned at the end of last year, and they're heading for 930, 950 guidance, give or take, here. So they're about to be a billion dollar revenue company. Well, also in 2020, remember, their first venture was the 2.8 million seed money in 2009. You know what education technology known as ed tech, VCs in 2020 put $16 billion in venture investment into ed tech. Wow, why are they doing that? Because it's a $200 billion today in terms of total ed tech spending. And in just five years, and we're in the first year of this five year run, it's expected to double to $400 billion in 2025. So in other words, there's a ton of opportunity and there's companies that are just getting started now or on their series B and C, still in venture funding phases of their company's development. And yet CHIP and 2U have been public for this time. And as you can see, they're driving back. Now, some people call this growing into your pants, that your pants were a little bit baggy, you, you took it in the shorts a little bit, 
and now you're growing into your pants and you're dedicating yourself to new metrics and a new story on Wall Street and growing back. And by the way, right now, even with a little bit of a dip that just happened here in first quarter, it's still a $2.6 billion company that has $200,000 of revenue per employee and is moving its cash flow uh, negative cash flow and losses in the right direction. And I believe they're going to be profitable by the end of 2021, if not have a profitable quarter in the second quarter. So the whole point is, this is what we call tailwinds. Tailwinds. VCs are still pumping money in. There's opportunity. Tailwinds. The spending of the customers that are going to be using this that are there. At a time where they have the graduate programs, they have the short courses thanks to the Get Smarter acquisition, they have boot camp and other things and the Trilogy technology, and Trilogy is a meaningful part of the revenue right now, but there's nothing that to you has to apologize for that. They've built a company with a diversity of products to move forward. So when I look at this, I believe to use in a good space. Why? Thanks to COVID, we have all been taught around the world the following. You can do it from home. You can work from home. You can learn from home. You can grow from home. You can succeed from home. Take a look at the financial services industry. No less than Goldman Sachs is moving people to South Florida here in the United States to reduce the cost of real estate in New York and get their teams in a place where they don't have state income tax. And they love it. And they have a little bit better climate in Florida. And by the way, some of these people are going to be working from home, still cutting multi-billion dollar financing deals. Goldman Sachs knows what it's doing. It's optimizing its cost of commercial real estate, and it's helping its people be happier, optimizing their costs, their personal tax you know, percentages based on what they earn. Some is capital gains, some is ordinary income. There's a blend that happens there. But they're moving their people down to Florida and do it. And that's just one example of the many companies where COVID has worked. Well, guess where else COVID worked? It helps at the university levels where crowded classrooms become less crowded classrooms and people choose to learn at home. Given that we've all been trained that this can happen, I think this is just meaning more and better demand for the 2U services and what they're offering. As a matter of fact, I think Chip just announced that they've crossed 300,000 uh, students on file or total students life on file. That's significant. You take a, that's like 10 universities, 30,000 students to a big university. That's like 10 universities. That's a pretty good milestone. That's a that's a pretty stout number, which means that 2U is working. The revenue is here. The stock price is coming back. You're moving your cash flow, negative cash flow and your losses in the right direction. And you've got tailwinds, which is COVID, ed tech spending, and the VCs who are out there, you know, testing the, the wind and testing the currents for where they should be investing their money. 16 billion was put in just in 2020 significant. So now let's talk about some lessons for you and me for entrepreneurs. What can we learn from 2U and what can we learn from Chip? Step one, I believe you stay on course. Chip knew he's an educational software and technology company. The, what he has purchased and what he has gone, he has stuck pretty much to his lane. Has everything worked out as planned? No. COVID came up, that's a bit of a tailwind. They had some challenges here. They had to re-explain to the market what they were doing and how they were gonna measure. But stay on course. He hasn't gone off to do things that are you know, off course or different. He's staying with higher education, educating people, helping them do more with an education and a certification that now they have to help their career, their next job, their next phase of life. Second, keep fighting. You can read the quotes from Chip. He has kept fighting and kept driving. There's a lot of guys that might have packed it in, go find a new CEO here, step into an executive chairman role. No, Chip kept fighting and he stayed in it. This is a pretty difficult thing. When you're a founder, you think about the company as yourself, as I'm sure you and me do. That's what I thought when I built a publishing company I later sold. You got to look at things through a dispassionate lens, but it's so hard to do that when criticism comes and you feel it personally. 
Chip could have packed it in. And who could have blamed it? Hey, I've been doing this for 10 years. Maybe it's time for me to do something else. No, he kept fighting. Never give up. Keep your course. Then watch the trends, but be you. Short courses and boot camp, these were good. I think these were very good acquisitions that two of you made as they stayed on course, but they watched the trends, be you, but be ready to take advantage of things that might be acquisitions that add to your product while staying on course. And lastly, the last two, which I really like, having met Chip and seen him pitch uh, there in Salt Lake City at the GSV Education Conference, he was populating his presentation with Van Halen references. So what can be better than my noise-canceling headphones, a little bit of Van Halen as I'm working on plans for my business, and I'm tuning out the critics because I'm staying on course, I'm going to keep fighting, I'm going to watch the trends and be opportunistic. There you have it. That's the story of 2U. It's had a bit of a bit of a grind that was here that was probably tough to get through, but the company is coming back with the tailwinds that are here. And I think this is a great example of a company that went from seed to private company, venture funded, through the IPO, and through the grind of being a public company and having the market respond to you in this way. But they kept on fighting, and I believe they're going to be there for a long time. Much is happening in education technology. As a matter of fact, I just heard an announcement. Again, we're here in March of 2021. That Cor uh, I think it's Coursera is going to drop their announcement that they're planning to go public. So there's a lot that's going on. A lot of people are trying to go public. And you've got the uh, legacy incumbents that are out there, people like Wiley, who are trying to do this too. But I think 2U is in a great position, and they're doing great, and I'm a fan of Chip. And Chip, if you ever want to come on Valuetainment and talk to Patrick, Bet, David, and myself, drop us an email. You know where to find us. Well, that's what I think about 2U, but what do you think? Leave a comment down below about your thoughts. I'll answer as many as I can and make some suggestions for upcoming case studies. You can also subscribe to Valuetainment, please do, and hit the bell. You'll get notifications of great new case study content. And if you want to go check something out now, here's an old case study I really like that's awful educational as well. Until next time, I'm Tom Ellsworth, the BizDoc, and I hope I left you better than I found you.